a really curved tooth. And a brand new file system to remove gutta percha from it. When it comes to retreatment, it doesn't get more challenging than this. One of the things that everyone does in a lockdown is try new things. For us, it wasn't cooking or picking up a new skill. For us, here in the practice, we decided to try a new file system. The Hyflex remover is a new addition to the Indian market. There isn't too much literature to read and go through. So this is going to be more of an unboxing and a hands-on try with a difficult tooth that we obturated. As somebody who is interested in the academic aspect of a file as much as the clinical aspect, let's try and understand what are the features of this file that differentiate it from the spectrum of other file systems that are available. Electropolished, heat treated, C-wire. That's what this file is made up of. Besides this, this is a file that is based upon the concept of conservation, which means the whole idea of preserving as much dentine as possible, which generally does not happen when you are retreating a tooth, has been incorporated into the file system. So you're talking about a file which has a 7% 30 at its tip, but that 7% taper is only present for the first 10 millimeters. Beyond that, there is a 0% taper, which means by the time you reach the cervical third of the tooth, that, that most important pericrevicular dentine, you will be preserving that as you insert this file. The fact that this is a one millimeter wire means it makes it the thinnest or the smallest retreatment file available right now. With the exception of the files which are based upon a helical spring-like action, uh, this would be the thinnest wire available as far as a rotary retreatment file system is concerned. As far as the rest of the construction goes, it is a triple helix which is symmetrical for the first three millimeters, beyond which it becomes asymmetrical. What this means is that we are talking about a file which will be friendly to the dentine. It would not just keep on removing from the cervical area which needs to be conserved. Another important aspect of this file is the fact that it has a non-cutting tip. An instrument which has a cutting tip has the possibility of transporting the canal or creating a new path which was not the original path of the gutta percha. This can be seen by the red arrow on the X-ray on the right side of the screen. A non-cutting tip ensures this problem does not happen. There are two things that one must keep in mind before we start using this file. First of all, it comes with a coronal shaper. It's a small file of a larger diameter which basically is meant to create a 2-4 to four millimeters space, a guiding pit into which your retreatment file can be inserted. The second thing which one must keep in mind is as far as the directions for use of this file are concerned. If the gutta percha is partially filled in the previous treatment, you only need to insert this file up to the previous gutta percha. However, if the, the previous gutta percha is filled full length all the way down to the apical third, you are supposed to stop a few millimeters short of that apical area because there are chances of you extruding gutta percha if you ram this file all the way full length. The directions for you state that that last bit of gutta percha should be maneuvered with a hand file and then removed. Does this all translate into reality? Well, let's find out. Okay, so when I look at the directions for use card, I see that the orifice coronal flare instrument has to be used at 400 rpm of speed and 2.5 newton centimeters of torque. 
and they recommend the same torque of 2.5 newton centimeter for the actual high flex remover and a speed between 400 to 800 rpm but when i look at this publication from november 2020 and this is professor walid professor walid neme an interesting article talks about this instrument they recommend a slightly higher torque of about 3 to 3.5 i think it's going to boil down to a user preference but i'm going to try both these torques the orifice shaper is a short 17 mm instrument the actual high flex remover is available in 19 and 23 millimeters usually 19 is enough for longer teeth the 23 is also available here's a lower molar with a slight apical hook or a mild curvature we will begin by drilling that pilot hole into the gutta percha using the orifice shaper of the high flex remover system determine the direction of entry which is extremely important and then start the process the stroke that we utilize here is a short insertion with a mild apical pressure don't push the file and then disengage gp will start coming out in flakes as you can see over here irrigate and in the space created start using the high flex remover the stroke again is an in and out with the slight engagement of the gutta percha with very mild apical pressure once again do not push the file and let the file do its job We are currently trying this out at about 550 rpm and a torque of about 3. Irrigation is a key part of both primary as well as retreatment. You can see small flakes of gutta percha coming out. If you do not irrigate well, you will end up pushing these fine particles in a more apical direction. In the space created between the gutta percha and the canal wall, Insert the high flex remover in the same stroke as previously described an in and out motion engaging the GP with minimal apical pressure. You will see the gutta percha coming out in flakes or sometimes even as a whole depending upon the quality of the original obturation. Between insertions, make sure that you are removing all the debris and gutta percha from the high flex remover or any retreatment file for that matter. You cannot afford to push this debris back into the canal. An IOPA made at this stage of the treatment will show that there is still some gutta percha left in the apical third of the tooth. If you recall, the high flex remover is not supposed to be taken full length. You are supposed to use hand files for the apical third to loosen or disengage the GP. After that, if the tooth allows it, that is you have a straight canal, you could even use edge files to remove the gutta percha. Alternatively, you could create a space or a path using the hand file for the apical GP and even try some of the rotary files available to remove the remainder as they prepare it. Looking at this IOPA, we are only left with the gutta percha in the extreme end of the apical third. That's a tricky gutta percha. Inadvertent or wrong use of files can push it forward. Here we are using an EDM25 after having created the necessary path with the hand file. The idea of using this file is to prepare the apical third and in the process also remove the remnants of gutta percha present. And when we irrigate, that gutta percha comes out in flakes. Using careful hand instrumentation, we are able to establish apical patency as you can see in these close-up videos. And so if you look at the x-rays, we have been able to preserve the original canal anatomy and remove all the gutta percha from this tooth. We tried this file in a couple of other situations as well and every single time it gave us the same reproducible results like this particular tooth with a strong curvature and the tooth was obturated using a warm gutta percha technique about a year ago. That's the coronal flare instrument which creates the pilot hole. We are just using it for a few millimeters below the orifice to give us that passageway for the high flex remover to enter. Gutta percha as you can see comes out in flakes. 
copious amount of irrigation to remove any debris and the IOPA shows the space between the gutter percha and the canal wall. That is the space into which the high flex remover will be inserted in the same in and out short strokes followed by irrigation. Compare the two IOPAs. Especially in wider canals, you will realize that some gutta percha remains in the dilated portion of the canal and does not come out with the high flex remover. In such situations, the metallurgy of the high flex remover allows one more movement besides the usual in and out. You can actually use this in a brushing motion against a wall as you withdraw the file. This brushing motion will remove the gutta percha adherent on the walls. As you see the next series of x-rays, you see the different stages of removal of the gutta percha that was adherent to the wall and finally the entire canal was cleared. We were able to remove the entire gutta percha down to the apical third, a few millimeters short of the working length, with absolute ease. When it comes to curvatures, especially strong curvatures like this lower molar, this file is not meant to go into them. It's not anything to do, it's, it's, not, it's not a comment on the nature of the file. It's simply about the size. A 7% 30 is never meant to get into a thin tortuous canal. I wouldn't put a 7% 30 routine rotary file during my primary treatment into a canal like this. So one shouldn't expect and one shouldn't try putting a file of this size into a strong curvature like this. Curvatures are meant to be negotiated in other ways. For example, in that mild curvature of the previous tooth we demonstrated, I preferred putting an EDM25 into that space after creating the right path, the glide path, with a number 10 file through the gutta percha. However, for a curvature as strong as this, I would not even put an EDM25 at a 7 or an 8% into such a strong curve. How to manage that curvature? Oh well, that story is for another day. That was one way to remove gutta percha from the root canal system. For all the other ways of removing gutta percha, as well as all the other challenges that one will face during a retreatment, don't forget to watch the other videos of this retreatment series. eeducation.in is going to simplify the entire complex idea of retreatments. Stay tuned.